Today on Nation, we're gonna talk about how to train employees. Hopefully, even if you don't have employees, you can get something out of this, maybe some good ideas, and if you are training employees, hopefully you can take a thing or two away from it. But either way, stay tuned to WCR Nation. What's going on everybody? Jersey here from WCR, window cleaning resource, windowcleaner.com, and of course, WCR Nation, and you're here. If it's your first time checking us out, have a look around. Hopefully you like it, hopefully it doesn't suck, and hopefully you wanna watch some other episodes. We have well over 100 episodes to go back and listen to. It's available anywhere podcasts are available, and the conversation is done on YouTube. Go to YouTube and search WCR Nation, and you will have that pop up. That is where the comments happen. And speaking of, if you're watching on YouTube now, make sure to give us a thumbs up because that is awesome. And comment, tell us where you're from. If you're hiring, how many employees you're running right now, comment down below. I want 100 comments there. Comment as much as you guys possibly want. That would be awesome. Um, if you are one of the elites, somebody who buys your supplies through me, huh? Thank you very, 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 very much. It is because of you that I get name brand stuff. And I love the fact that every time people buy from me, they tell me a new thing of name brand stuff that I can get. And if you want to be one of the cool kids and buy your supplies from me, certainly do that. My number direct is 862-312-2026. Throw it all in your cart. Shop on your own leisure. And when it's all ready to be checked out, shoot me a text. Say, yo, it's uh, in my cart, ready to be text, uh, checked out. And I can certainly do that for you. So. Again, that would be absolutely epic. A couple of quick shout outs for everybody. Uh, Taylor Rinto, what's going on, man? I'll see you at the convention. Uh, Rich McCann, what's going on? And of course, David Clintworth, another one of the awesomeness, awesome people. Um, thanks, guys, for everything you do. If you're commenting, I want to pick a couple of people and always say hey to. But this week, we're talking with the man, the industry legend, Mr. Stephen O. How are you, man? Good. How are you, man? Good. <laughs> Thank you for that amazing intro. <laughs> Isn't that nice? See, I, I, you know, I try. Nice. <laughs> I use the man, the myth, the legend so often. I had to yeah. a little bit and then go proper with the Steven O instead of just Steve O, you know. There you go. I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, what's up, man? I mean, if people don't know anything about you, A, uh, they haven't been on YouTube ever, but B, Tell us a little bit about you as far as your channel, what you do video wise, and give us a little kind of brief history of you. Um, I'm a co-owner of a window cleaning company in uh, Colorado, 2020 Window Cleaning. Along with that, I have also done a lot, a lot of window cleaning videos on YouTube on my own channel, Steve O the Window Cleaner, and also on Window Cleaning Resources YouTube channel, and just basically sharing anything knowledge wise about window cleaning even small teeny tiny things but um do a lot of like how-to videos a lot of tool reviews I, I really like to stay in that area um business and stuff i find is kind of boring so i find that if someone's going to watch something being away from work maybe it's a little more fun to talk about tools or the techniques and not so much of the you know the paper and the black and white stuff and that stuff's not too fun so i try to keep to some of the fun stuff and also topics like uh like his water fed polar risk topics that a lot of guys don't like talking about so yeah i try to explore a bunch of different places with my youtube channel and it's been fun it's been fun to meet a lot of people through it it's uh opened a lot of fun doors and uh it's been an overall very good experience so how cool is it to see videos when you put a video like within 24 hours you're in like the thousand plus mark like did it's you cool but then you go look at like other channels of like guys or power washing videos just do insane. Yeah. Uh, there's some guy that creates uh, oddly satisfying pressure washing videos. That's all he does on his channel. 1 million views in a week. I mean, it's just mm -hmm. insane. That's it's crazy. Insane. But it is cool. It, it's cool to know that um, their information is helpful. Sometimes though, I'm very surprised on some of like the really dumb videos I put out and they get like, tons of video tons of views really really quick yeah that that frustrates me because some of the videos that i'll put the most work into just flop you know <laughs> I, I thought about them over you know the scenes and, stuff. <laughs> and then some video that i like at a job and i just throw it together real quick 
you know, gets tons of views. Yeah, and, and, there, and then there's people commenting, this is the greatest one you've ever done, and you thought it was a throwaway. Yeah, I did yeah, a video time. like four weeks ago, and someone said the exact same thing, and it was literally because I was too lazy, and I threw together a video, put some music on it, called it something dumb, and it worked. Yeah. And that's, that's social media. Like the, the biggest channels on YouTube are kids opening toys. Yeah. That, that's the makeup, you know? They may do the same thing, but with just a different color makeup, but they get millions of views. It's crazy. It's a crazy world. Yeah, I, I, uh, I, I'm a little the same where there's no rhyme or reason. If somebody says they have it figured out, they're lying because I swear to you, the effort that you go into just titling something of like, okay, something that has been a good SEO term, that's something that you, people are searching for, you put the video out and there's like, you know, you're like, a third less views than normal and you're like what the heck you put another yeah. one out you didn't do any research because like you said i'm a, i'm on vacation and i'm like oh man i gotta put, post a bit and then it's yep. yep but anyway if you haven't checked out the videos go check out steve-o's videos they're absolutely epic and uh i like the cinematic versions of like the videos they're just in my stuff all i do is stare at a camera and it's the same thing you always see i think it's pretty awesome I'm glad I don't have to do the editing you guys do, but it's pretty awesome to kind of be able to go on the job and, and go through all that. Yeah, no, it definitely is. But speaking of all the videos that you've been doing and uh, working still, uh, you know, full time, meaning like 60 hours a week, um, you still somehow need to hire. And right now you're in the same thing where you are in desperate need of hiring for your company. It's kind of, past pre-spring of course we're into summer and we're not quite to the low of summer where you want to hire you're kind of still in spring busyness so you're in a position where you know it's hard you almost kind of miss the boat as far as the perfect timing but there is no real perfect timing but yeah. you know it, it is kind of what it is what, what are your plans for hiring and how do you go about as far as how to hire or when to hire when are your what, what's your brain thinking of at this time um, for hiring, I, I like to use Craigslist as far as like putting out there, um, you know, we need somebody and just kind of outlining our company and kind of what we're looking for. And I really like to see someone with a resume, like someone who's trying to actually try to get the job, not yeah. just email you and say, I'm pretty good at working and that's it. Or, you know, <laughs> their name and their phone number. Yeah. Um, the other really hard thing though, I think is that money wise, it's hard to find people who want to work for that starting wage. It's yeah. really, really hard right now. Like $15 an hour, they're like frustrated, you know? And then like when they first start, all you're asking them to do is like get the screens out, clean the screens, you know, kind of watch what we're doing here and just see what we're doing. Uh, you know, we're at a storefront, wipe up my mess for the first day. I don't know, you know, do yeah. something, but kind of watch or just stay on this one window and try to get down fanning or try to get down, straight pulls on this one window with polling. Um, that's a big thing that I have found over the past couple of years in training people is that everybody's different and it's really hard to decide how to train them based on just how they're interacting with you. Um, we've tried to put systems in place and stuff with hiring, but it's just like every single person's different. Some people have experience, so it's really hard to break bad habits. Yeah. Every high rise window cleaner this is not to say anything bad about high rise window cleaners, but every guy I've worked with, they're very like minimal on what they want to do. They don't really like want to go over and beyond. And that's just the experience I've had with like four different guys ranging from 30 years experience to two years experience. It's yes. always been the same. It's just wash squeegee, nothing extra. And that has been a really hard thing to like ingrain in them. You have to do extra because they have seen that that works Yeah, works for them at a certain time. So, for you to tell them you have to do more, it's like, I don't want to listen to you. It worked somewhere else. Why do I have to do that now? Yeah. So, I mean, we haven't tried Facebook. Um, I'd, I would love to post in the pro window cleaning group, but I feel like all the guys in there, you know, have either been window cleaners for a long time or have their own company. Yeah. I don't see ever anything really happening from there as far as posting in there. Um, but I think Craigslist has been the best as far as finding a lot of applicants. You need a uh, large hold net when you're going off Craigslist those because you do, like you said, you get the guys who you'll post the thing. I always put in my Craigslist ad, 
that they have to answer some question or they have to make the title of the, you know, at the end of my whole thing, I'll say, make the title of your email, I'm super or something. And if they don't do that, that means they didn't read it. They can't follow directions and I delete it. Uh, but yeah. uh, I love the ones where people call and they or they'll send an email and it'll just be like, uh, do you hire felons? That'll be the <laughs> only thing. And it's like, okay, I personally have no, you know, qualms necessarily with that kind of stuff. But if that's how you start, that's what you live off. And uh, it's, it's big enough for you to bring up. There's some guys that, you know, in an interview, they'd explain it to me. I don't care, you know, as long as it's like in their past or whatever. So right. but getting the people in the door, that is a really hard part because Amazon's out there paying people seventeen fifty an hour to pick stuff off a shelf. And the generation that we're going into now, it's very hard to be like, hey, you're going to actually work with your hands. You're going to get out in the field. You're going to deal with cold and warm and bugs. Exactly. People just they, they don't they don't do that, so it's it's yeah. really hard to find. Right, and it, it's like you almost got to find people who love to be outside, who love like working with their hands. And in Colorado, that's actually pretty easy to find. You got a lot of rock climbers here. You got a lot of people that want to go outside and, and, and yeah. do stuff outside. But um, it's more like the younger generation. We hired a young, really young guy last year, seventeen, and I mean, it was just hard to get him going. Yeah. You know, you just wanted to get in the car and just play on his phone. I mean, got in the car. I never heard of a word from him in the car, just on his phone. And that was a lot of guys that I've had work for me that have been younger. It's just glued to that phone. The yeah. quickest you can get out of the car, get the job done, get back, sit on your phone and check Facebook. Like that's their goal. And it's it's like, crazy. Come on. Like I'm paying you and we pay hourly. Yeah. So it's like we're paying you hourly. And I've always told, and that's what I found too, is like, you know, guys on commission, they'll go pretty fast and they'll work pretty hard. Guys on hourly, for some reason, do the same exact thing when you're trying to tell them just like take like just slow down a little bit. <laughs> like, I'm not asking you to like take your time and be slow, but make sure everything looks good. Make sure everything looks like we're paying you hourly so that you can take that extra time. Yeah. And, like they know that if they don't work eight hours, they're not getting this amount of pay, but for some reason they want to be home in six hours. That's I cool. never understand that. I don't get it. That's the catch 22 is either hourly or if you're paying hourly, people want to milk the clock. Or like you said, speed things up and, and not do the job they're supposed to. But if you pay them commission, then they cut corners because then technically it's faster and they make more money. It's, it's a catch 22 either way. Oh yeah. When I worked off commission, I cut corners. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's the kind of the nature of the game. It really is. Yeah. It's like, what could I do to get these jobs just a little bit quicker, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. Well, let's talk a little bit about when you finally get the people in the door, how do you guys structure your training as far as okay we get somebody in they have no experience how do you start with as far as what their first week looks like how long do you have them in kind of shadowing and training before they're on their own kind of give us a like quick rundown on that we throw them in pretty hard right away <laughs> nice. Nice. Uh, just because for some reason we always kind of hire late in the season so usually for let's start at like homes at homes we start them off with the clean screen with the dog, man. <laughs> I start them off with cleaning screens. That's how Jim and I do it. Uh, clean screens and kind of watch the process. Once they have screens done and we've shown them some basic straight pull squeegee techniques. I mean, we start off with straight pulls because usually when our guys come in, they have to start at least cleaning some windows, especially at homes. Yeah. That's where we usually start them at. We get all the screens clean, put those back, put them in order for us to put them back as we're going through cleaning the home and then go start on basements. Everything they do though is going over again. As far as if they've done the whole basement, we're going down there and we're checking everything. We're going through with them to make sure that they've done the right thing. Yeah. Um, we go over all the tools, the tool belt, you know, we do provide all the tools. So I'm saying nice. don't provide everything, but usually, I mean, provide at least the basics, like the stuff that they need to get through any kind of job. Right. Um, as far as learning, you know, the techniques, I think that comes with time and just repetition. It's more making sure that like they're friendly when they go into houses, that they're watching out for certain things, safety yeah. stuff. I mean, sometimes I think that's the biggest thing that's missed. Um, that's well, that stuff you almost – you almost can't train for that stuff. Like if you're nice to people and you could talk to people, that's something you either know or you don't know. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So yeah. Nice. I like that basement window idea where you get people in on 
they can get nose to glass, but they're not in like the main picture window where, you know, they can kind of take their time, make their mistakes, correct their mistakes, that kind of thing. I like that. And I like to, when, especially with storefronts, what I've always done, first day, whatever. Okay, here's one window. It will usually be a window they'd be high enough to do a little bit of pull work and then high and then you know low enough to do a little bit of fanning. I yeah. want you to pull and I want you to fan and I want you to do it over and over mm-hmm. and over and over again. I mean, because when you first hire someone, you have to know they're not gonna make you money for a while. Oh yeah. You, you know, it's, it's that's just part of the process. So I trained a lot, a lot of people at fish, and that's what I would do. And I would say, This is your window, I'm gonna do the job you know, and then I'll come back and you can show me what you're doing and we'll go over technique. And I would literally just do that at every single job. And, yeah. and it worked out really, really nice over time. And I found that to be the most efficient. And also another thing is you can do at storefront. I want you to mop for me. And I know yeah. it sounds so basic, but there's stuff that people will do. Maybe, you know, they don't get all the areas with mopping. Right. Uh, I want you to detail after I squeegee. I right. want you to just anything and everything you can break down to the smallest bit to a to a certain level, I think helps. Yeah, it's the understanding side of it. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. So now say that same guy comes in, except for he has 10 years of experience. How do you start that guy? What's his first like week look like? We'll throw him right in. I, yeah. I want to see I want to see what you got, you know, and uh, I think that's what Jim did with me. When I came to him and I had experience, you know, it was, all right, let's see what you got. Let's work a couple of jobs. I'm just going to watch and work with you and see if I see things. And usually I have found with guys with experience, storefronts, commercial stuff goes all pretty well. It's the homes yeah. where, where things really start getting to like, you're not, you're not doing the extra things to make sure that the window looks right. You're not steel wooling. You're not detailing correctly, you know, and, yeah. and that's where I find you really have to hunker in and just make sure they're doing every single thing right. To yeah. a certain, I, I don't like to hound them. I don't like to be over top. I like to have fun at work. But for those first couple of weeks, it, it is hard. And it, it's a hard learning process. I know in my first couple of days of doing storefronts, man, I think I came home and I cried. Like literally, I was like, what did I, why did I ever leave my other job and come to this job? Like this is the most frustrating thing. Yeah. But it's just like, if you really want it, you're going to go for it. You're going to learn the techniques. You're going to ask as many questions as you can as the veterans around you if you want to learn. And yeah. that's the, you can tell with someone if they want to learn really, really quick. Yeah. So. No, no toddler falls over 50 times trying to learn to walk and just go, that's ah, not for me. Yeah. <laughs> but, you know, just keep going. Like it, just, it will get it. When am I going to get it? I don't know. It's going to exactly. Yeah. But when you have somebody that um, comes in, right off the gate most of the time not most of the time some of the time when they tell you all this experience they have you end up watching them and go there's no way or you haven't cleaned in five years even if i haven't actually had a nose to glass squeegee on glass in probably three years personally and i could still pick up any equipment and still smoke a lot of people like there's there's something when people tell you that they've done it and you find out oh you mean you well, what, well, what had happened was it was my aunt's store and I was actually the, the front desk person right. and every now and then she'd ask me to go do the window. And, you know, she asked me to spray the Windex and then just squeegee and see what happens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, you know, the other thing is, is that, like you said, with houses, high rise guys, high rise, like we'll say 60% in high rise is 100%, you know, uh, that's like. Uh, a 60% good job is 100% for high rise guys, yeah. whereas 75% maybe on uh, uh, route, right, is 100%. Right. But houses, it's 100%, it's 100%. Like there's yep. a lot more, like one little fleck where you're not coming back in a week. You know, yep. that little fleck has to be taken care of. But the hardest thing is, is that that person has to see it. Like yeah. training that is just training the understanding in Windows in general. So. Right. And I think another big thing that we keep away from them for a little bit is razors. Yeah. I mean, you have to, you have to train. I mean, that's going to cost you the most if they screw up. Yeah. You know? And also steel wool, especially because of tint, like in houses. Right. I mean, a guy goes crazy and just starts steel wool in the whole window. You're going to have to remove the tent and you're going to have the window retint it. Pitted, yeah. You know, and, and that's the things that uh, I remember when I was training Alex, we were in a house and she took one of those bronze wool pads to a tinted window. She started 
just started going. Oh man. And I'm outside watching him like, no, oh, cause you can tell all the windows are reflecting, you yeah. know, no, stop. And she just can't hear me. I get in there. The whole thing is just, yeah. just gone. And then you have to calmly, instead of in front of the homeowner, like, can we talk outside real quick? We just, yeah. We just yep. cost, uh, you know, $150 tin job or whatever. You know? Yep. Yeah, exactly. But another big thing I found, um, ladder safety. Ladder safety is huge. Um, that can take a lot of time, I think, to train someone that hasn't been on ladders. It's, it's odd to get, you know, an older worker that hasn't been on ladders. But I have found, even with them, it's like you need to go over every single little tiny thing just to make sure that you've said it. Yeah. You might see them do it wrong again and you have, you have to jump in there and you have to correct it. That's what I battle with sometimes. It's like you're having a good day with someone, but you see them do something wrong. Do you jump in and tell them, okay, you got to stop doing that. And what way do you approach it based on their personality? Yeah. So yeah. the one thing we started doing uh, with uh, it's not even training, but it's in our interview. So after our interview, if we like somebody, we end up putting them in for a day just to kind of see how they work in the field. Because you may interview great and you don't, you know, our interview. But when we do interviews that day, our guys set up a ladder, 24-foot ladder inside the shop, all the way up to the ceiling, and they just leave it there. And then when we're done with everything, we always say, so how are you with heights? Oh, no, I'm fine. Oh, you use ladders? Yeah, yeah, I'm fine on ladders. Okay, cool. When we walk out, I always say, well, one thing, before you go, I got a ladder set up here. You mind just going up to the top, touch the, the rafter, and come back down? And they're like, yeah, no problem. And I'm telling you, we've caught a few people who were so bad. I had one guy never made it to the top. He's on the ladder shaking so bad. His knees were shaking. The whole ladder's going da 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 And we oh, had wow. guys that were on the bottom of it, you know, holding it, obviously. And the whole ladder was shaking. And he came down. And he goes, I, I guess I'm more petrified than I thought. You know, I, I can get better. I said, this job is not for you if you're that terrified already, you know. And right. those are the hard things. Like you're saying, it's like when you get somebody in, there's so many aspects to this and training that you have to find a place to start, but you have to still train everything. You know, it's super, super tough. And with you, how long does it take for that new guy? How long is it? I mean, everybody's different, but on average for you to go, okay, high five, you know, you're on your own now for a while. Um, I would say at least on your own three months. Wow. I just, yeah, I know that's kind of, I know that's long. Um, but that's just where I feel comfortable with. Uh, yeah. I'm very picky with the basics. Like if you can't close out right, I'm not going to leave you alone. Right. That's like one of the biggest things in young storefronts. Cause I'll teach straight pulls on the top. I won't teach any crazy fanny things. That's if someone wants to get into that. Great. But I know that the basics work for, yeah. you know, storefronts and stuff. So I'm just training the basics. But if I see things or, you know, they've like, done a straight pull tapped window and I've come back the next time around the next month and see that tap because they forgot to clean that window. Then, you know, they're pulled. All right. You're coming with me all the time. Yeah. And we're kind of a company too, though, where we work like in either groups of two or three. Nice. So usually Jim or I are with the crew. It's right. Kind of rare. Cause we kind of have just a smaller thing. It's kind of rare just to say, okay, you know, take the other company truck and just go off by yourself. Yeah. And when we've done that. I mean, We've had issues, <laughs> you know, it's, yeah. it's, just, it's just what's happened. I wish we could let guys out on their own more, but that's what I was talking about earlier in that it's just been hard for us to find good people. Yeah. Now, now on a guy, on a, on a company that's running four guys, what's your turnover every year? I mean, are you still running high turnover that way? Or do you think that because they're so well-trained that you, they feel so comfortable in the job that they stick around? Um, anybody we've had has never, they usually quit run winter. Yeah. That's what I have found. Uh, the newer guys, um, Alfredo has worked for this company now for, I think 14 years. So, I mean, wow. he, he's been great. Um, really, really good. And then it's just Jim and I, and then Alex has been here for, um, a year and about a few months before that though, it was just always in Colorado, I would find so many guys just quit in the winter. Yeah. And with a smaller company, once we get down in that winter time, keeping two guys busy is pretty much taking care of everything. Right. Yeah, yeah. As simple as that. And it's either me working with usually Alfredo or it's uh, Jim working with Alfredo when I take time. Because Jim and I both will take some time off in the winter. So that's something mm -hmm. like what we do now. So being a smaller company, maybe having that like – 
big outlook on how it would seem with like, you know, at fish, there was just extremely high turnover. All yeah. these guys coming in and out. I was training guys every training new guy every two weeks. Wow. You know, that guy would be with me for a week. So there I really saw the high turnover. And for those guys, what it was, was they got out there for a week by themselves. They were making 30%, but then they couldn't get the job found fast enough. The jobs weren't bidded at a price that was really going to do well for the cleaner. Yeah. So it made the salesman money. Quit. Yeah. And they would quit. And especially again, winter time, always like three to four guys boom out the door. So yeah. every season there, I know the highest we had was 10 people and there would always be five new people every season. Yeah. And I mean, we would just go through um, the middle of February. One guy would come in, we train them about until the beginning of March. Then another guy would come in um, beginning of March, train them to the middle and then another guy and so on and so on about through the end of May. Yeah. Because we really planned on half of those guys not making it. And that's what would happen. Crazy. You know, yeah. what's crazy is that fish can run that way. And I'm, if you're working for fish and you're listening, this is not me. This is just an observation, but uh, fish can run that way. And they're hiring that many people every year where the rest of us is just having such problems, even finding somebody that we, we think higher, you know, I feel like if you're hiring that many people, you have to kind of lower your standards to just get the people in the door. Yeah. 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 And if you don't know what a fit, how fish kind of structures, they have salesmen, salespeople who are paid on commission of purchase, you know, when they sell a job. So their job is to get them to sign the paper, right? They don't actually clean. So not always, there's obviously good things and, and, and whatnot, but they will sell a job on occasion lower than it should be because they're going to get the people to sign. They make their commission, they go on to the next one, where now the window cleaner comes in and now they realize they're making, you know, $8 to drive an hour each way and doesn't make sense for them. Yeah, yeah. I'm sure there's many out there that, that really have a well-structured I just didn't work at one. <laughs> yeah. Well, that's the other thing too is as a franchise, there's so many of them. I know there's some super successful ones and I've met some fish guys that are some of the smartest guys I've ever met in the industry. And uh, you know, it just depends on where they work or what they do. And, and uh, it's just different culture. Yeah. In our area, in our territory, there's a different fish and their, their guys have worked. There's one guy that's with there for like 20 years. It's great Great. window cleaner. Super, super nice. And I always kind of ask him like, how do you keep doing this? But he really, he just enjoyed it. It works for him perfectly, yeah. you know? Yeah. And, and it was nice there. The nice thing about there is like pretty much every day you're off by two o'clock. Yeah. You, just, you get your invoices, you know, every invoice is signed, blah, blah, blah. And I mean, you get out of there by that time. But that's mm-hmm. another thing to talk about too, is training people on, you know, collecting all that type of stuff too. That fish yeah. that a lot more you know, getting up there, having people sign it every single time, doing that kind of stuff, making sure you're marking the right things. And there's that whole aspect as well to it. So I don't know if we don't, we do most of our invoicing through QuickBooks. So most of our employees don't have to deal with that whole thing, but I don't know. What did you guys do as far as that stuff goes? Yeah, we did uh, in the actually day before, but every day they'd walk out with something that I know is blasphemy, but it was called the Bible and it had everything they needed. It had all their invoices all packed in envelopes and they had an envelope with the address that matched the uh, calendar sheet. So they'd hand every single job, they'd hand the invoice and they would collect on every single job. So, but like you said, that is something that when they train, so we ran our crews, we run a crew chief, which is the person who heads the operation. Then we have a tech and the tech is the guy who usually does the outside work or uh, vice versa, but they're the ones that don't talk to anybody necessarily. They say, Hey, how are you? Here's my name. And they just get to work where the other guy is the real face of the company. He's the guy who talks and makes a small talk and how's the kids and gets everything. But when you're training somebody new, we would always have the new person go with the Uh, crew chief because they need to see how that other side works, right? They can get the window cleaning and how they do that, but they need to understand, okay, well, uh, what do they get? You know, what's the bill look like? What's the process look like? What forms do I get? Where do I put them? Like, even if they're not doing that, like you were talking about before, they need to kind of understand the whole process uh, and every little piece of it to understand the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that part of, being able to talk to your customers is like super, super important. And I really, I really did. I, I was a tech. Like I love to go in, get the job done, be done. Like that, yeah. that was my thing. 
And until about a few years ago, we really didn't understand like people aren't impressed by you just cleaning the windows really well. People are impressed by cleaning the windows good and also being really nice and interacting with them. And yeah. once I started doing that, people remembered me, you know, and it was just, it was just such a different feel when you went into a place and you had a conversation about nothing about the work you were doing, but just about their lives, your life. And what I found too is people love talking about themselves. Yeah. So ask them about yourself, ask them about them. Don't tell them about your company and stuff. Ask them about what's going on in their life. Don't get too personal unless they want to. But yeah. there's, I've met some fascinating customers, you know, that I love going to and talking to them as much as I can, you know, yeah. and that's the fun thing about storefronts is like you see them every four weeks, you know, you can tell if they don't want to talk, you can tell if they do want to talk. Yeah. And, uh, it's that, that is one of the most important parts is just building that relationship. And, um, I've, I've learned a lot of that from, from Jim. Yeah. Uh, 2020. So yeah. nice. That, one thing that I always did to understand if somebody could talk to somebody is in my interview process, I'd always ask two stupid questions. And it sounded really professional to them. They're stupid. I would always ask, what would you rather be the best player on the worst team or the worst player on the best team? And not because there's some weird underlying, you know, idea about it. There's no psychological thing. But what it is, is it's a question that there is no answer to. And it makes people have to break out of their comfort zone and answer it on their own. And I like it because a lot of times when you get guys who are really, really shy and they ended up being shy out in the field, they would, oh, uh, well, you know, it's, uh, well, you know, they couldn't do that. I understood that if they couldn't do that, they couldn't start a conversation. They couldn't open a conversation. But if somebody you'd ask them, they go, well, you know what? I have to truthfully say that I would, and they can answer that calmly, even though they don't know the answer. There is no right answer. Anyone's yeah. right. Yeah. I still knew that they could create a conversation and they could keep a conversation. I knew that those guys were more uh, prone to being crew chiefs instead of just techs. Yeah. Like I feel so bad these days, especially during the summer when you're jam packed and you kind of feel like I have to really get in here and get out. Like yeah. I feel bad not talking to the customer more now where I used to be like, Oh cool. Like I only had to say a few things and collected a check. Oh, it's great. That's such a bad way to do it. <laughs> yeah. You're working so much right now. I mean, you, uh, if anybody is watching, I know you even mentioned it in your videos that, uh, now is just a real stressful time. And it is for a lot of guys who have gotten to that point where, uh, there's a hard part where it's like, okay, do we hire or do we not hire? Like we should hire, but I know in a month it's going to slow down. So do we just kind of push through or do we hire and then have slow time? Like that's where you're at right now. And it's, everybody has that kind of catch 22 where, you know, either way you're going to win, either way you're going to lose. And I know for you, you kind of just went, you know what, we're just pushing through right now. Yeah. It, it's, you look at the schedule and it's overbooked. And, but the crazy thing is, is somehow it always works out Yeah. By, by the end of Friday. If you have to work a little bit on Saturday, fine. I'm totally cool with that. But somehow like that big job you're worried about that big house, they have to move it. So all of a sudden you have three hours of free time. Okay. Now we can fit that into there. So we're good. But then the next day something else comes up. We got 700 window partition job on Saturday. They might want to do, Oh, well, now we got to leave Saturday open just to see if that comes through. And it's like, yeah. There's all this maneuvering, but somehow by midday Saturday, everything's worked out fine, you know? And then that's the thing that I've always tried to tell people for people at a company, the window clean company, they own what they're doing. You are capable of a lot of work. Oh yeah. You can get a lot of stuff done. You can get through very large homes very quickly, you know, like, and not be that exhausted. Yeah. But it's hard though, the days when you go out by yourself and you're working these eight to 10 hour days. And I, and I do that um, regularly as far as just, you know, pushing it. And, and that's what it is all last week was Alex was gone. And so I was by myself the whole time and it was just, oh, yeah, it was just grinding. Just wake up at, get out of the house by six thirty, get to your first job by seven fifteen, and just see how much you can get done by five. Yeah. You know? I don't like working late. Luke loves working from like 4 a.m. to 8 p.m. I told him, I said, that's not for me. <laughs> I got to get home and get some sleep. I got to get some pizza or just get home. Like I cannot do that. Just turn it off. Yeah, yeah. Turn it off. Go home. That's the other thing that, you know, a lot of guys, everybody's listening, understands it. But for new people, they don't quite understand. Oh, it's just washing windows. It's easy. I've and they don't understand that it is like a physical thing in the entire day. You're physically doing things the entire day. And the amount of brain work that it takes to like check the window and look at your corners and to kind of like 
the focusing, it just really is draining sometimes. So, you know, it's yeah. the same thing. It, it, yep. You either hire or you do it yourself and, and hate life for a little bit. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Now, is there a time of year that you will not hire people? Is there like, I just will never hire people in December, you know, no matter how much work I have, it just doesn't make sense. Yeah, never. Yeah, never in the winter. Um, never really in the fall. I mean, the only time it's going to happen is uh, spring or summer. My, I, I love to hire people in March so that by like May, they're ready to go. I think yeah. that's like the perfect amount of time. You really have some slow days in there where you can go. You know? But yeah, fall and uh, winter, I just would never hire someone because you, know, you get your snow days. And for us, it just gets slow. You know, we're, yeah. we're doing our storefronts. Two or three of us can take care of our biggest jobs on our busiest weeks easily. Yeah. Just yeah. So, yeah. And that's what I, I'll add this in is that's what I ever liked about um, working at Fish was that the, in the wintertime, they would have guys that would, they wouldn't give them very much money every day to go out and make, you know, but it was like, let's just keep them around and eventually yeah. quit. And it was like, ah, that's like such a bad way to do it. I never want to be that company. It's just like, well, I got 20 hours of work for you this week, even though you had 40 hours all summer. And that is, I, that makes me feel bad. It's, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's, it's tough. Yeah. It's yep. tough, especially when you're in a seasonal place like you to kind of keep people busy, you know, just, it just mm -hmm. is. Yep. When you're in this industry, you understand it, even in the nicer weather places, there's still slumps, there's still slow times and, and you may not be busy all the time. So yeah. Yeah. Yep. Well, cool, man. I appreciate you kind of hanging out with us, uh, talking about employee training, which I know, as you said in the beginning, this is a boring subject. I know you like to be more entertaining and exciting than this, but I do appreciate you talking about it. This is like stuff that, you know, you kind of have to just wrap your brain around, especially like in your case, you're getting ready to do it. Uh, you know it's coming up. you got to get it all kind of understood before it even gets out there. So if you're watching and you think that you're going to be hiring anybody, those are some ideas. You know, take it with a grain of salt, but learn. Uh, if you haven't checked out Steve-O's window cleaning channel, you have to because it is absolutely epic. And you have to subscribe because in the YouTube world, that is like, you know, that's like a virtual high five is to yep. Yeah, it's like a kiss. You know? It is. It's like a <laughs> soft kiss of, of gratitude. There you go. Um, but if you are listening and you need to buy any type of supplies, window cleaning, pressure washing, whatever, please do let me know. I want to be your rep, and that's how we run things. I want to be your personal rep. I want to be your guy that you have. So my number, 862-312-2026. Please call me. Text me, whatever you want, and we'll certainly go through that. And if you're watching on YouTube, like I said, comment down below make sure to give this video a thumbs up of course and uh yeah until next week go out then before i say that i forgot we're giving you a coupon code this week five percent off of your entire order if you order through me this week's code is steve i almost forgot i'm sorry but if you order i know for all you guys who uh do that code every single week it is steve this week so call me 862-312-2026 steve but anyway until next week, go out there and be epic.